Chewbacca. Some of y'all didn't get that. A-K-A. Everybody say A-K-A. I had somebody before service say, why are we doing a series called Aka or something like that? No. A-K-A. How many know what A-K-A stands for? Also known as, and we've been talking about a few of the different names for the church. The church also known as a bride. The church also known as a family. The church also known as a house we talked about last week. And today we're going to talk about another one. The church is also known as an army. So everybody say, I'm in the Lord's army. Now, when you hear that, what do you think about? What do you think about? If you grew up in church at all, you think of that song, I'm in the Lord's army. I I was wondering if y'all would have that, right? (laughs) Yes, sir. Right. And I couldn't like, when I'm going to talk about being in the Lord's army, I couldn't not show you this. Our son, he's five years old. And back in May, he graduated from pre-K, all right? And and actually in May, uh, within an eight-day period of time, we had a kid graduate from pre-K and a kid graduate from high school, all right? Y'all pray for me. Now I have a kindergartner and a senior in high school and a freshman in college, all right? But anyway, at his pre-K graduation, he was over at a little Christian pre-k and so they did a little show you know like they do and they did some songs with some motions and this was one of the songs that they did I'm in the Lord's army yes sir and I captured it on my phone who would like to see it come on like, I thought you might so hey can we just show them that stick it stick it up there Come on. He had that down, man. One day he's going to be a preacher up here like his daddy, right? And a little proud dad moment. But man, when I think of that, I can't th- help but think of that song. When I think about the Lord's army and being a part of the Lord's army, I mean, there's so much to it. In fact, normally during this part of the sermon, this is where I would say, okay, everybody open up your Bibles. We're going to look at this passage that really just explains everything that I'm going to talk about today. And as I started thinking about this principle that the church really is an army and I start talking about thinking about what the Bible says about that I started looking for scriptures and there's not like one particular scripture that says we are the Lord's army yes sir it doesn't say that exactly in the Bible but you see that theme all throughout the Old Testament the New Testament all through the scripture I mean you're gonna see stuff like Paul says hey as soldiers in the army we should put on the armor the full armor of God that we would make sure that we could stand our ground in the battle that we are facing and we see things like Paul called his buddy Timothy he called him a good soldier and he called his friend Epaphras he called him a fellow soldier and Jesus said stuff like this like I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell are not going to prevail against it come on that's a military type of talk right there where Jesus at one time he said hey the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing and the violent will take it by force I mean that's That's all army talk right there, right? And God has said, I believe it throughout the scripture, that God has called us as the people of God to be a part of his army. That as the church, we are also known as the Lord's army, a part of the heavenly host that God is bringing together. Now, when I think about this idea of being in the army, and I even just think about the army, first of all, I think about all the incredible men and women who have served in our armed forces. Come on, can we give them, I mean, 
If, if you are a veteran or if you are currently serving in the armed forces, thank you so much. And I know all the stuff, crazy stuff going on in Afghanistan. Let's be praying over that as well. Because, man, people give their lives for our country and for other people. And we're so appreciative of that. And so when I think about Army, I think about that. But I also think about some other things. There's some other words that kind of come to mind. And the one that I want to focus on today is this. Like, if you are in the Army, what do they call that they call that being in the service right like like if you are in the army what are you doing you are serving your country you are serving in the army and when I think about being in the Lord's army there's a whole lot of things that I could that I could talk about today but what I really wanted to focus on is this is that if we are in the army of God if the church is an army then one of the things that we are called to do is we are called to serve we are called to find a place to serve in the army, in the kingdom of God, in the work that God is doing among his people and in the church. Now, of course, this is not something we see very much nowadays. In fact, we talked a little bit about it last week, but for a lot of people, church is a lot more of a consumeristic kind of a thing. So instead of coming and serving, sometimes it's more like, hey, come so that they can serve us. Sometimes we, we think, man, I want to go to church and I want them to have it all ready for me. And I want, you know, I want there to be a parking team to park me. And I want there to be a greeter team to greet me. And I want there to be ushers to ush me, whatever that means, right? Like, I, I want it all to be taken care of before because I'm coming to kind of to be served. I'm coming so that I can sit and enjoy the show. But guess what? If we're in the Lord's army, guess what? We're not called to sit and enjoy the show. We're called to engage in serving in the mission that God has called us to. We're not called to come and consume. We're called to commit and to contribute. Come on. We're not called to sit in a seat. We're called to sit, on, to serve on a team. We're not called to come to get. We're called to come so that we can give to others. Come on. I can do these all day long. I'm just telling you. Like, we're not called to come and just sing. It. we're called to get on a team and bring it come on that's what I'm talking about and so what are we talking about we're talking about serving in the army I want to talk about it a little bit today and I and I think there are really four things that happens when we get in the service when we are serving in the army as soldiers in the army of God four things so if you're taking notes you can write them down number one soldiers in the army of God this is what we do we serve willingly everybody say willingly, willingly. we serve willingly how many of you have ever done something before that you did it, but you didn't really want to? Come on, Ray. Come on, Ray. Let's be honest. You're in church. You got to be honest. We've all, right? We did it because we thought we had to, thought we were supposed to, you know, maybe obligated to, things like that. You know, it's like parents in the house, you know what I'm talking about, when maybe you tell your kids to do something and they're like, but why do I have to do that? And you're just like, you know, the famous dad words, because I said so. Come on, anybody ever said that before? <laughs> And, it, you know, then the kids are like, but, but that's not enough. I don't want to. And then it kind of reminds me of the kid that one time when he, the, he, the two kids are, were fighting and, and not sharing their stuff. And so mom said, I want you to share with your brother. And he's like, why do I have to share with my brother? And mom said, because I said so. And so then the little, little boy is kind of sharing with his brother. And then he looks up at his mom and says, I might be sharing with my hands, but I'm not sharing in my heart. <laughs> And how we know that's the way it is sometimes in the kingdom of God, in the army of God. I might be serving with my hands, but I ain't serving with my heart, right? Like, I'm not doing it because I want to. I'm doing it because pastor said I needed to. I'm doing it because they gave me a free t-shirt. I'm doing it because this is what I should be doing. But how many know, like, when we are serving in the army of God, we're not doing it because we have to. We're doing it because we get to. We're not doing it because we have to. We're doing it because we want to. Come on, think about people who have, who have served in the military like they serve willingly they sign up for it like there's really only been a couple of times in the history of America where we've instituted a draft most people who are serving in the armed forces are serving in the armed forces because they enlisted they signed up for it they said willingly I am willing to give myself for something that is bigger than me and guess what let me just tell you something God doesn't want to institute the draft like, he doesn't want us to serve because we have to or because he makes us to. No, he wants us to serve with this attitude of, man, I want to. I get to. Like, I'm going to serve willingly. In fact, here at LifeGate, 
We, we typically don't use the word volunteer. Typically when we talk about serving, you'll, you'll hear us say, serve on a team, get on a life team and serve. We don't really like that word volunteer because it kind of has a connotation with it. And yet I started thinking about it as I was thinking about this message, maybe we should use that word volunteer because it has an element to it that says, man, I'm volunteering. I'm, I'm signing up, like, not because I have to, but because I want to willfully, I am giving myself to something that is bigger than me. In fact, the scripture talks about it like this in Ephesians 6 and verse number 7. Paul says, serve what? Willingly. As if you were serving the Lord and not merely people. What is he saying? He's saying, hey, we should serve because we want to. We should serve. Like if we're in the army of God, we're doing it because like we're enlisting to use our life to make a difference for others. Not out of obligation. In fact, Paul says it like this in Romans chapter 13. Be under obligation to no one. The only obligation you have is to love one another. What is he saying? He's saying, hey... When you serve, like if you're doing it out of obligation, you're doing it wrong. The only obligation you got is to love one another. So truly, the, the true meaning of serving is to go, hey, I'm serving because I love people. And because I love God. And because I love his house. And so I'm willing to give myself to serve others. The army of God, as soldiers in the army of God, we are called to serve willingly. But then notice number two, we're also called not just to serve willingly, but number two, we're called to serve faithfully. Everybody say faithfully. 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 Called to serve faithfully. In fact, when you think about it, the word servant and faithful, those two words in the scripture, they just go together. In fact, it reminds me of the parable that Jesus told. We've talked about it many times around here before. It's known as the parable of the servants or the parable of the talents. You may know it as you remember what Jesus said. Hey, there was a master and he had three servants. And to one he gave five talents, another he gave two, and another he gave one. Or a sum of money was what a talent was. And, and then they took it and they began to put it to work. And the guy who had five brought it back and he, and he had turned it into ten. And the guy who had two brought it back and he had turned it into four. And remember what? the master said to those guys he said to them well done good and what and faithful servants you have been faithful with the small things and now I can put you in charge of many things you see that those words they go together faithful and servant if we are a servant then we are called to be faithful faithful servant these things they go together and we learn this really important principle from that there's so many principles from that parable but one of the principles that we learn from the parable is that when we are a servant what we really realize when we're serving in the army is that even the little stuff matters even the small things like the one guy he had one and what did he think he think well I only have one it just really doesn't matter so I'll just bury it in the ground but the other two realized, even though I only have two, or even though I have five, like the big things, the little things, all this stuff, like it all matters. When you are serving in the army of God, everything matters. Think about it. Someone who's in the army, like serving in the army, even the little jobs that you do, every single one of those matter. In fact, in the army, they could be even the little stuff, the difference between life and death. Like your, the, the, your brothers and sisters that are serving in the army with you could literally lose their life because somebody didn't do a little job, right? And it's the same in the army of God. Even the little stuff matters. Like there is no valuable job and less valuable job. In fact, let me say it like this. Just because something is more visible doesn't make it more valuable, just because I'm up here more visible every Sunday, you see me, doesn't make the job that I'm doing any more important than the job that they're doing back there in that booth so that you can hear me or so that someone online can, can watch or so that the worship team can lead people in worship. Just because it's more visible doesn't mean it's more valuable. Just because you see Pastor Josh up here every single week, you know, doing his worship and, and what, like, you see him every week. You don't see the, he's over here laughing. You don't see the mama or the, the people back there holding the baby so that mama can be here and worship without thinking about their baby while Pastor Josh is leading us. You don't see it 
but it's still valuable. The little stuff matters just as much. Like everybody just do, do their part. And, and if we'll do the little stuff, then what does it say? Like if we'll be faithful with the little stuff, then that will lead to opportunities for more. And for maybe even bigger stuff. Although it's all big and it all matters. But when we're faithful with the little things, then what does he say? Hey, now I can put you in charge in even, even bigger things, in, in even more things. In fact, here's the truth is that many times our heart is actually revealed in how we handle the little stuff. If we handle the little stuff with the right heart, then God might see, hey, you're doing little stuff as if it were big stuff. Let me give you some more stuff to do. Let me give you more responsibility. In fact, sometimes it's the small jobs that reveal the big hearts. Sometimes it's the people on the team, the people in the army, they're going, man, I'm doing the little thing, but I'm doing it with all of my heart. I'm faithful with the little things. And then God goes, okay, hey, you have, I have seen your heart in the little stuff. Let me, let me continue to bless you with even, with even greater. Let me use you in bigger ways, just like, just like the servants in the story. He said, well done, good and faithful servant. I think about that and I break it down and I go, man, if I want to stand before God and hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant, then what does that mean that I have to be? It means I have to be good. What does that mean? I'm going to do everything I do with excellence, with all my heart. I'm going to get good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to develop my gifts and my, and my talents and, and the things. I, I'm going to be good at what I do. Come on, right? But then I'm going to be faithful as well. I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to be able to be counted on. I'm going to be a servant. That means I'm going to have the heart to serve not myself, but to serve others so that one day I can stand before God and I can hear him say those words, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. Now let me put you in charge of many. In the army of God, man, what do we do? We serve willingly. We serve faithfully. But then notice number three, we serve sacrificially. Think about this. Someone who serves in the armed forces, man, they make some big sacrifices. Man, they sacrifice time away from their family. They sacrifice comforts and conveniences. They sacrifice by going through all kinds of rigorous and difficult training. They sacrifice by putting themselves in harm way, harm's way, by living in very dangerous places and doing dangerous missions. They, they, they give of themselves. They make those sacrifices for the good of others. And guess what? This is what the serving in the army of God requires as well. I'm not going to tell you that today if you sign up to serve somewhere in the church that it's going to be all rainbows and unicorns. No, there's going to be sacrifices. There's going to be times when it's like, man, I don't feel like getting up and going, but I'm doing it because I'm doing it for not just me, but I'm doing it for others. In fact, the Bible says it like this in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. Paul says to Timothy, he says, every soldier who is called to active duty must divorce himself from the distractions of this world so that he may be fully satisfied with the one who chose him. What is he saying? He's saying, hey, if I'm in the army of God as a soldier in God's army, then there are going to be times when I I divorce myself when I sacrifice some of the other distractions I'm willing to give of myself I'm willing to lay aside some other things and make some sacrifices to do what God has called me to do for some men those sacrifices might be that I'm going to sacrifice like my busyness how many know that one of the greatest hindrances to servanthood is busyness we're busy sometimes it's not that it's not that we don't want to serve. And sometimes it's not even that we're like, like, a, like bad people. It's just that we're busy people. We got stuff to do. And it's easy to miss out on opportunities to serve because we're doing all this, all this other stuff. In fact, it reminds me of the story, the parable that Jesus told about uh, the man who's beat up on the side of the road. You may, some of you maybe remember that. It's known as the Good Samaritan. And here he is beat up and, and a, a priest comes by and just walks right on by. A Levite comes by, sees him and just walks right on by. Then the good Samaritan, we know, comes along and helps the guy. And, and so many times we look at that and maybe we look at, you know, the priest or the Levite and go, man, they should have stopped. They should have helped. Man, they're such terrible, bad people. Maybe they were. Maybe they weren't. Maybe they were like some of us. Maybe it wasn't because they were bad. Maybe it's just because they were busy. Maybe they thought, man, I don't have time to stop and help that guy right now. Like, I got I to 
I got to go to my meeting. I got to go to my thing. I got to get to my job. I got to go to my place. And we like to give those guys a hard time. But come on, we've all done it before. Don't tell me you've never let a call go to voicemail because you're like, I don't have time to help this person right now. Come on. Don't tell me you've never walked down a different aisle at the grocery store hoping that they don't see you because it's like... <laughs> never driven by somebody on the road who's broken down because like, man, I'd stop and help, but I don't have time. And a servant, a soldier in the army says, hey... I'm, not, I'm willing to be inconvenienced. I'm, I'm divorcing myself from other distractions so that, I can, so that I can serve a greater purpose. Here's another one, man. Here's what we sacrifice is we sacrifice the need for recognition. Sometimes when we serve, we're, let's just be real, okay? We're doing it because we want somebody to notice. Sometimes we get addicted to this need to feel needed. Like, oh, man, I want to do that because I, I want them to, I, I need to feel that I am needed and that I need somebody to recognize that. I need somebody to honor me. Come on, volunteer of the month. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need somebody to give me a title. Sometimes we put our identity in the, in the role or the title that we have. We even become kind of a little bit codependent upon it. Like, I'm doing this, but I'm doing this because I want people to recognize, I want people to notice, I want people to, to tell me how great. I am sometimes we can even get a little enti entitled like I show up every week they better do something to recognize me come on right but here's the deal when we're serving in the army of God what we're doing is we're going hey I'm willing to sacrifice that even if nobody else ever notices even if nobody else honors even if nobody and we should man we honor our volunteers and those that serve on the team man you are awesome but even if we never said that serving is not about that in fact, look what Jesus says about it. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 1, he says, Be careful when you do good things. Don't do them in front of people to be seen by them. If you do that, you'll have your reward from your Father in heaven. And when you give to the poor, don't be like the hypocrites. They blow trumpets in the synagogues and on the streets so that people will see them and honor them. And I tell you the truth, those hypocrites have already received their reward in full. And so when you give to the poor, don't let anyone know what you are doing. Your giving should be done in secret for your father can see what is done in secret and he will reward you. In other words, Jesus goes, hey, when you do something, don't blow trumpets. What is he basically saying? He's saying, don't toot your own horn. Come on, I know you like that dad joke right there. I'm good at dad jokes, actually. Speaking of dad jokes, I had to figure out how to get this in my sermon today. But on Friday, uh, our daughter, Briley, her, her battery in her car was going bad. And so I told her, hey, go to, go to O'Reilly's and have them test it out. And then call me and I'll come up there and pay for it. So I get to O'Reilly's. We're getting ready to pay for the, the battery. And the guy's checking us out, you know. And he goes, are you military? And I said, well, I'm in the Lord's Army. And he kind of smiled, and he goes, well, that's good. And, and, I, and I looked at Briley, and she's kind of rolling her eyes, you know. <laughs> and he goes, hey, that's a good army to be in. Just for that, I'm going to give you a $10 discount. <laughs> <laughs> it pays to be in the Lord's army. Come on. <laughs> if we're serving in the army, the army of God, we're going to serve willingly. We're going to serve faithfully. We're going to serve sacrificially, number four. We're going to serve wholeheartedly. People who are serving in the service, man, they're willing to give their whole self. They give their life. They leave it all on the battlefield. Why? Because they understand what they're fighting for. Man, I'm not just fighting for me. I'm fighting for my brother who's in the service with me. I'm not just fighting for me. I'm fighting for my kids and my family and my wife who are at home. I'm not just fighting for me. I'm fighting for my country I'm not just fighting for me, I'm fighting for freedom. Come on, I'm fighting for a cause that is bigger than just me. And guess what? It's the same in the army of God. We're not just serving for me. We're not just serving for you. We're not just serving for your church, man. I'm serving for people. People who are far from God. They need to know him. You're serving for, man, if you're serving in the life kids area, I mean, you're serving for that little boy who comes in and he doesn't have a dad or a father figure at home and the only real male father figure he gets is the one that he sees every Sunday when he comes to class. That's what you're serving for. And you're not just serving to, ser to you know, serve up some coffee back here. No, you're serving for 
that family that comes in and they're hurting. They've had a rough week. And they just need somebody to encourage them and someone to smile. And it's not just you're handing them some coffee. Like, you're encouraging them. You're smiling. You're loving them. You're showing them the love of Jesus. And we're not just, we're not just serving just to serve. Like, we're serving for that, that young adult that has been about ready to end it all and just wakes up and says, man, I'm give, God, I'm going to give you one more shot. I'm coming to church today, and this is the last chance. And we're serving for that. We're running a camera for that. Like we're on the worship team for that. We're helping the kids for that. Like there's something bigger. And so when we realize there's something bigger than just ourselves, we're willing to go, man, wholeheartedly, with everything that I have, I want my life to count for something that's bigger than just me. And if that's not enough to inspire us, then let's take it one step even further than that. Even if I don't serve for my church and I don't serve for my pastor and I don't serve for other people like I just described, I'm serving for my God. In fact, that's what the scripture says. Serve wholeheartedly as if serving the Lord, not people. Because you know that the Lord will, re- will reward each one for whatever good they do, whether slave or free. Colossians 3.23 says like this, whatever you do, work at it with all your ha- heart as if working for the Lord, but not for human masters. Why do we serve? Why do we give our whole hearts? We're doing it for God. Not doing it for the church. Not doing it because your pastor said to do it. Not doing it because they gave me a free t-shirt. No, I'm doing it because... God did it for me. Like, that's the only reasonable response, isn't it? When you think that he gave his life for us, in service of us, went to the cross, how could we not respond with, God, here's my life? Isn't that what the Bible talks about, Romans? Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. So, brothers and sisters, since God has shown us such great mercy... I beg you to do this. Offer your lives as living sacrifices for him. Your offering must be only for God and pleasing to him, which is the spiritual way for you to worship. When we think about what he's done for us, like how can we not say, hey, God, I'll I'll serve you. Here's what we're going to do. Today, I am unapologetically (laughs) inviting you to be on a life team. Like, I'm not going to apologize for it, because here's what I know. Like, it's the best thing you could do. Some, some of your growth, the, some of your greatest growth is going to happen when you get on a team. Some of your best relationships are going to happen when you get on a team. Some of us, like, we, we're, we're just struggling and we're discouraged. Some of the greatest encouraging times are going to come from saying, hey, I'm giving my life to serve somewhere. Like, I'm not, I'm not even just talking about here and now. I'm talking about an eternity. One day you're going to stand before God. And when, when God looks down and says, hey, well done, good, faithful servant. You did good with what I gave you. Like, you served. You were good. You were faithful. You are a servant. When he says that to you, you, you're gonna after you're done crying and throwing your crown down at his feet and all that you're gonna be looking around for pastor chad man thank you pastor chad <laughs> for that sunday that you asked us to serve i'm inviting you i'm not twisting your arm there's no obligation i'm inviting you now i will give you a free t-shirt you like these tur- you like these shirts come on they look good right I will do that. And I know sometimes we go, well, there's all kinds of reasons not to do it, not to serve, not to get on a team. I wrote down a few. That's why I'm sitting here. I want to look at them. Some people go, well, stick me with the kids. Let me just tell you something. If you don't like kids, we don't want you working with kids, okay? <laughs> We're not going to put you there if you don't like it. Some of you, if you'd try it, you might, actually. Some of you thought you didn't like kids, and then you try, and you go, wow, God gifted me for this. But we're not going to, we're going to help you to get somewhere you want to you wanna be. You might be like, well, if I sign up, like, then I'm giving my whole life, and I'll never get out, you know. It's like Amway or something. I'm in, I can't get out. No, we're just asking you, hey, try it for three months. And at the end of three months, if you don't like it, 
then you just let us know. It's not obligation. Some, some would say, hey, I tried serving here and that didn't really fit. Let me, let me try somewhere else and keep trying until I find somewhere that fits. Some, some say, I don't want to serve because I don't want to miss church. I love the worship. I love the sermons. I love the whatever. Guess what? We have two services. <laughs> and this is what we ask our volunteers to do. Serve in one and attend the other. That way you don't get burned out. And, and most of the time, we're only asking you to serve once a month anyway, right? And so you can do that. You can serve in the one, come to the other. I don't have any talents to offer. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You may not know what they are. That's why we do Life Track, because in Life Track, we actually help you to understand what are your spiritual gifts and what do you have to offer. And we want to help you with that. Oh, you know, I did it once and I had a bad experience. Well, we've all gone to restaurants and had bad experiences, but we didn't quit eating. <laughs> we just went to a different restaurant. I served and I had a bad experience. Hey, give it another shot. Well, they don't need me. Let me just tell you something. You may come in on Sunday and go, they got it all covered. They don't need me. I'm just telling you, we need you. Since COVID, only about 60% or so of our volunteers, really only about 65, 70% of our attendance has come back, but only about 60% of our uh, volunteers have come back. We, we want you. We need you. But more than we need you, I really believe you need, you need to have a place to serve. So here's what we're going to do. Everybody get your phone out. I'm going to let you play on your phone during church. <laughs> on the screen, you guys, can y'all put that up there? The, yeah, on the screen, there is a QR code. If you're not already serving somewhere on a team, or maybe at one time you were serving, but you haven't been, and you're ready to get to, get to serving again, here's what we have. We have these t-shirts for everybody that's signed up to serve new today or maybe weren't serving and going to re you know like recommit to that those that are already serving you we're already giving you your shirt we want you to have your shirt as well you see a bunch of people wearing them today but here's what you can do you can go to that scan that on your phone you just take a picture of it it'll take you there then just take just a moment to just fill that form out or if you're you know if you're having a hard time figuring it out we have paper forms at the next steps table we have people that will help you after service this is what we're going to do back at the in the lobby area there is uh, you'll see the table out there with the t-shirts you just take this form after you fill it out take it to them show it to them they'll tell them your size i think it even says it on there for your size they'll give you a t-shirt then what will happen is that will go into a workflow for us and the people that are our team here at the church will begin to connect connect with you via email or via text message or whatever to just to, to help you to get plugged in and find a place to serve. All right. Can we Thank you for joining us online today. Make sure and hit subscribe to this channel and hit the bell for more notifications. We can't wait to engage with you this week.